What makes a volunteer return with the same enthusiasm week after week, given their most valuable asset, time, to your cause? Good morning, leaders. This is Glenn Guyton, your guide to a thriving workplace culture. Welcome back to our executive coffee break. Leadership is about making everyone feel valued, especially those who volunteer their time for your vision. So let's dive into how you can master volunteer management and recognition. Well, you know what they say? You can choose your family. No, no, you, no, you can't. You can't choose your family, can you? I don't know. You can choose your workplace culture and you can choose your your beverage. You can't choose your family. You have to deal with them. But I hopefully, ha- hope, hopefully you have your beverage. I have mine here too. Uh, I'm drinking coffee this morning. Enjoy your beverage, whatever you are, are dr- drinking. And remember, as I always say to you, leadership matters. So you might as well get good at it. So let's talk about volunteer management. And I'm speaking in particular to our nonprofit leaders today. What motivates someone to give their their time? I think that's so important for us to understand that if you utilize volunteers uh, and and you are in this nonprofit sector, first things first, understanding what motivates your volunteers is very crucial. People volunteer for many reasons. They have a connection to to someone that's a a part of your team, part of your staff. They believe in your cause. Uh, Maybe it's it's for personal growth. Maybe the service you provide is something they've been through. So uh, I know there are religious organizations, organizations that deal with uh, helping people during times of disaster, organizations that deal with abuse or the unhoused or deal deal with children. And so maybe these things resonate with your people. So one of the first things you have to do as a nonprofit leader is to recognize these motivations and align your engagement strategies accordingly. Help people understand the why of this volunteerism. Like, why are they coming? You need to understand it so you can engage and you can reach out and you can get the volunteers that you need. So understanding their why, understanding that motivation is really the key to capturing uh, the heart of the volunteers and getting them to be a part of the work that you are doing. As a nonprofit leader, you can't afford to pay people for all of the things that you need to get done. And so you're going to have to depend on these volunteers uh, in order to help you accomplish your, your mission and your goal. Number two is effective uh, communicating c- communication as we think about strategy strategies communication is key regular updates clear expectations and open channels for feedback create a supportive environment a volunteer who feels heard and understood is a volunteer who stays let me say that again a volunteer who feels heard and understood is a volunteer uh who stays and we want long-term volunteers uh in, in some cases volunteers become like like family. Now there there will be volunteers who come and go, but we want to keep keep regular engagement with our volunteers. Capture their information when uh they come and volunteer for your organization. I mean it leads to a number of things. Uh it will lead to uh more donors for one thing because if they get to get their hands dirty, they get involved in your cause, they're going to really understand it. It's going to submit that why uh if they believe in your cause, they can see the tangible things that that are happening. And so capture them, Uh, stay connected with your volunteers and they can, they'll even recommend other people to come and volunteer. They'll bring other people in and uh, say, Hey, this is a worthy cause. I'm giving my time. I think you should give your time and I may even give some money to support this, this cause. And so uh, keep your volunteers engaged, keep them excited, uh, tell their stories. That's, that's so, so important. Again, if we go back to the first point, about understanding their motivation, that should be part of your communication is is touching that that part of them 
that makes them want to volunteer for your organization, whatever it is. And make sure you're communicating well with your volunteers, really, even even on site. Have a volunteer coordinator, someone that's not so busy and distracted that they can't care for the volunteers that are working that are on site. Uh, Sometimes people make the mistake when they're uh, managing volunteers that they're so busy working. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. No, you need someone dedicated to guiding the volunteers so that they know what they're doing and that they're doing meaningful work. I've shown up to a number of sites as as a volunteer. I was uh, in youth ministry for a number of years. And so I would take kids to volunteer for different organizations. And then, you know, you, you'd be at, at a work site for a while. And then uh, many times the organization would just leave you. I don't know what I'm doing. This is not my community. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I've never done this before. Uh, and so I, and I, I, I didn't have anyone to connect with or reach out to. And so then we were just sitting around idle. I felt like I wasted my day. I wasted these kids days uh, because the coordinating organization couldn't effectively manage their volunteers and they didn't communicate with us effectively so that we knew what we were going to do and we can go from task to task. So that kind of drives me to my next point. Number three, training and develop, development, invest in your volunteers, offer training sessions that not only equip them for the task at hand, but also contribute to their personal development. Show them that their growth is as important to you as their contributions. And so get your, tell a little bit about the history of, of, of what they're going to be, what they're going to be doing if they're volunteering for, for you. If it's just a, a day program, you know, maybe you have a video that you can send them ahead of time, but orient people to what they're going to be doing. Tell them the story of, of the work what's behind it, what drives it, then give them some details of what they're supposed to do. And if you don't know what they're supposed to do, don't have them come volunteer. If you can't effectively engage your volunteers or tell them what to, what to do, just say, we don't have anything for you to do today. It's okay. It's better to turn away some volunteers than to have them go out, go out and do meaningless work or work that isn't coordinated. Um, I've run some pretty big volunteer efforts um, and and I've had some week long efforts. And at some point uh, we were just kind of going back over the same area. We were picking up trash in the community. We were just going over the same area. It was no more trash, but the uh, volunteer coordinators just didn't shut it down. They should have just shut the program down. Say, hey, you've done excellent work. We're not going to make you come out here for for no reason. Um, and so, you know, I kind of like, man, I don't know if I want to come back and volunteer here. You know, it's, it's, it's not organized well. So make sure you have proper training and development. You let people know what to do or what to expect. Uh, and you give them meaningful work to do. And if you don't have meaningful work to do, turn them away. And then that goes back to number two, uh, effective communication. Say, hey, you did a good job. We cleaned up all the work. Uh, we don't have any more uh, for you to do today. But in the future, we may have some work for you to do. Uh, so training and development is really important. Training your coordinators is, is also important uh, so that they can convey the proper information to your volunteers. Number four, and this really goes if, you, if you're going to have more uh, regular volu- volunteers, have a volunteer recognition program. And these are going to be the volunteers that come on a regular basis. You may have retired people. You may have a school or something that's connected with you. Uh, but show your volunteers that you care and that you appreciate them. Uh, so you have some long-term ways to do that. Because uh, rec- recognition is so important. Genuine appreciation goes beyond the occasional thank you. Uh, so just a few best practices. Uh, personalize your gratitude. Write notes and letters. <clears throat> I've uh, worked some programs where uh, all of my key coordinators, after the event was over, I wrote them a handwritten note. I mailed it to them and, and said, hey, Thank you so much. Mention some specific things that they did. Tailor your recognition to the individual. Make it meaningful. Celebrate milestones. So for your long term volunteers, uh, recognize the anniversaries, hours that they contributed uh, or completion of a significant project. Make sure that you recognize them so people uh, can see the value in the work that they've done. And it it will also make other people want to volunteer in your your program. Public acknowledgement is always good. If you can get news story stories, get the media to cover it. Uh, people like that attention. Feature your standout volunteers uh, in your own newsletters 
or on social media. You can do some of this yourself, even if you can't get the local media to come and participate. Have volunteer appreciation events. Um, I, I've done this with some religious groups where there's an annual uh, event for those that come and volunteer. Those those are great. Uh, sports teams do these things to uh, host gatherings or, again, award ceremonies to honor the dedication of those people that are volunteering and, and making your organization work, grow, and thrive. This is so important for nonprofits. Nonprofit leaders do better. I, I need I need my nonprofit leaders to do better, right? Don't just take people for granted. Don't just take your volunteers for granted. We want to create uh, an, an appropriate culture. We want to create this culture of generosity, uh, and we want to recognize people that are giving given to us. And, and for you, executive executive directors, you all are getting paid to do this, right? Y'all are getting paid to do this. Uh, treat these people well that come and volunteer. Make sure you're capturing feedback and testi- testimonials uh, to show how uh, their efforts are directly impacted um, by their, their mission. And this is stuff you can do, too. If you have a grant organization, get some pictures, uh, get some testimonials, show not only what good the volunteers are doing, show what the, do- the dollars people are giving they're doing. So you can use these same recognition Tips that I'm giving you for volunteers, you can use this for donors too. Donors or grant writing agencies, so they can see the impact of what's go- what's going on. And uh, hey, when you have your events, you know, again, treat your people well. Have some some food out there for them. Have some um, some donuts, or they like some vegan food, some kombucha, whatever you want to have out there for people. Let them know that they appreciate it. You know, don't have people out there tired and hungry, and, and you're not taking care of them. Treat your volunteers well uh so that they'll continue to come and support the work that you you do so here is my challenge for you today identify one new way you can recognize your volunteers this month again it can be as simple as a personalized note or as big as an appreciation event whatever it whatever it is just make sure that it counts okay so that's your challenge for this week is to uh, figure out something new, a new way that you are going to engage your volunteers uh, and just watch and just see what the impact of that is. All right. Take care of your people. Take care of your people. We are all, all of us, all of our, uh, us as leaders are in the people business, whether it's our paid staff or whether it's our volunteer staff, we want to make these people feel special and we want to want them to keep coming back and, uh, reach out to some of these retired people or people that are, you know, stay-at-home parents. Reach out to them. Uh, they need some stuff to do. Uh, they some of them need purpose, and you can give them that purpose in your organization. And this is the other thing. I think that we need to recognize people, right? But also work people. People like working. People want want to do stuff. They want to do stuff, and they can do stuff, good stuff in your organization. They want it. They want to engage. Uh, and so do that. And if you are a for-profit leader li- listening to this, you have community events. Use some of these same principles to get your workers to volunteer for other organizations. So for-profit leaders, you can drive engagement into your community. So you can utilize these same principles and have a volunteer program for your paid staff. OK, have a volunteer program for your paid staff. Let me say that again. For-profit leaders, you can have a volunteer program for your paid staff to get them to volunteer for other organizations uh, in, in this uh, reciprocal type type thing. You get some benefit from it. The nonprofit gets a benefit from it. So in closing, just remember leading with empathy and inclusivity isn't just about managing a uh, pay staff. It extends to individuals who touch your organization, especially your volunteers. So let's not forget the strength and perseverance that it takes to lead with empathy and inclusivity. Better leaders get better results. To So to every one of you leading the charge for a more supportive and engaging workplace, I leave you with this. Stay bold, stay inspired, and remember that your actions today shape the culture of tomorrow. I'm Glenn Guyton. You have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day.